the man marches up to you and says in this very deep voice, you are summoned. Nereo summons you to the wedding. And, uh... Wedding? The rest of them gather around you and they I start hurting. I know what's hurting. happening and I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> You have confronted the little alligator, who is now three times the size that he was just moments ago. And he snapped and nipped at Percy a little bit, and it is now uh, Raven's turn. Raven basically advised run away, and it becomes Josephine's turn. Is this animal actively hostile? He seems... To be in guard mode. But not actively hostile. Well, he came after Percy when Percy approached him. Well, like, uh, as a defense. He's not actively hostile. He's face-to-face -face with Percy, and it depends on what you guys do. <laughs> okay, so. But he'd have to get Percy, past Percy to get up those stairs anyways. Tame animal. Animals born go. and raised far from humanoid settlements Ooh, rarely yes, get along something. with two-legged beings, yes. whom they assume to be dangerous predators. In go. spite of this, you know how to approach and entreat a wild animal so that it is more receptive to your presence and requests. I'm going to try. I'm going to let you try. You betcha. Yay! I'm going to use a move. Take a move. So go ahead, and now you need to roll and against... Roll. The little alligator's will, correct? I have to roll against you his against will, him. Yes. Will <clears throat> to see if you can tip. And uh, you know she's been sitting beside Raven long enough that now she's starting to come on, get come on, baby. She's well, scheming. good will hunting. <laughs> That's good. Big money, big money. I rolled a five. <laughs> he rolled a six. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I'm not making that up. He really did roll a six. You make a very, very small impression on the animal. He feels the effect of you do, making an attempt. What it does to him is it just makes him stop any aggressive tendencies that he has, and he just stops and he closes his mouth, and you hear a big old gurgling, snarling uh, growl out of him. You hear this. <laughs> Poor alligator tumbly rumblies. Let's feed him some piranhas. And it becomes Percy's turn again. How about I step away from the alligator and then go back 20 feet? <laughs> <laughs> You're and, hiding behind me now. And do nothing further. Okay, so you basically step away from the alligator. Step away from the alligator. The alligator's turn, and you see as all of a sudden... Uh, the alligator's body shakes and convulses a little bit again. Here we go. The book. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> As the alligator shakes and convulses again, it once again grows in size. Oh, no. So it is now a big... Ooh. Ooh. It's an even bigger alligator. And he is now as big as three of you put together. He has not become aggressive. He's standing there. You see that he still has the same collar on that apparently is magically growing with him. But now it's big enough that the little tag hanging around it that was tiny and, and, and not legible before is nice and big. And it's got some kind of lettering engraved on it that you cannot read. Would it be re writing that I could read? Is it writing that you could read as a weird tiger a memory? Weird tiger memory. Roll for recall knowledge. Okay. 14. It clearly says the equivalent of spike. <laughs> <laughs> and it becomes Lavinia's turn. All right. I am going to. I don't, I don't want to hurt him. That's the whole thing. I know, thing. it's hard. You guys don't know what to do with him. I mean, well, I'm going to walk up to the front toward where he is. Okay. And 
I'm going to talk to him and say, we mean you no harm. You are safe here. You see that he has no idea whatsoever what your intentions are or what you're trying to say. Also, what he does is he opens his mouth really high like this, and he just keeps it like that with his jaws sticking up to show how big and fierce he is, because this is what alligators do, in case you don't know. And he's like, and you get the smell of some digested fish and other things that uh, this alligator has had for we, breakfast. We have a lot of piranha for you, if you'd like. It was fun talking to him. And it becomes Raven's turn. And What's Raven Raven, doing? Raven decides that he looks at his spells, and other than he decides to conjure a mage hand, he walks up so he's within 30 feet, right behind where Lavinia is. He conjures a mage hand, and he sends it over to pet the alligator. Aw, that's cute. The alligator snaps at it, bites it in his mouth, and goes, rrr, 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 and then spits it on the ground. And the mage hand goes, bloop, 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 and limps away. It becomes Josephine Smith's turn. I rolled a 12. What are you doing? Same you are now the front now. person. Oh, tame animal. Yeah, right. I'm trying again. All right, here we go. I will roll for Mr. Alligator. And he rolls a... Verify that. It's a 20. <laughs> for crying out loud. For crying out loud. I have this, like, amazing special skill. I just want to make skill. sure that is so I'm not making it up. It's a 20. It's 20. It's so. fine. It's fine. I'm trying my hardest here, you guys. Are. You're trying okay, to okay, do okay. a good job. No, no, I've got two more tr- turns. So. You do. I rolled a 16. Are you still trying to tame him? Yeah, I am. I'm going to say that subsequent attempts to tame on the same turn minus have, five, minus five. have... Yes. That's an 18. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, okay. Good try. I'm not going to shoot the poor thing. He's not doing anything <clears throat> wrong. He's just... Guarding. Okay. What are you doing, little uh, Josephine? Same thing okay. with a minus ten. So I rolled a four. <laughs> no, no, no. Four, four. Yeah, I rolled a fourteen, mm. but minus ten. Oh, four. well, that's not okay, as bad. Okay, I thought okay, I was going to okay, give fine. you like a minus six there. Fine. All right, here we go. Thirteen. <laughs> that is one lucky alligator. I'm just trying to befriend him too. Like I mean, he's he's lucky. He's it awake. becomes Percy's turn. Pull some dried fish out of out of the bag of holding and throw it out. Okay. All right. So you and just like a dog, he gobbles it down blah, 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 and he concentrates on the fish. And I'm going to use my beast speak to say, "There's more where that came from." Okay. All right. You see him stop for a moment, and you see this crocodile head turn to the side, and this crocodile eye. I, the holding bag on your waist, like, maybe I should eat that. Uh, anything else you're doing, Percy? Uh, I think I'm staying where I am, and I've tried everything I can try for the moment. Okay. It becomes the crocodile's turn. Crocodile's turn. <laughs> and you see this periodic effect take place again that's happened the last three times, mm. that uh, as the last six seconds has passed, once again, ooh, you see him morph into a really big crocodile, crocagator. I wish to, at this point, thank an amazing artist, uh, two, two amazing artists. One would be Percy. Percy made, 3D printed, all four sizes of our little crocagator. He, I have the littlest one. I want it. <laughs> he wants to keep it. It's a set. So Anyways, he, he printed, and then Thad, and Thaddeus, thank you very much to Thaddeus. Thaddeus painted all four sizes of our crocodile. Those look great. And, and Thaddeus, of course, is a genius at painting stuff like this. So we want to thank Thaddeus for doing oh, such a great you. job. Round of applause for that. Yeah. Yes. Rob, and, Rob, and, Rob, and for Percy. And Ian, thank awesome you. Job, Let's put back Mr. Big Crocagator. Back where he is. All right. As he grows to this size, you see him now deciding you might be a tasty snack after all. He gets ready to attack. And just as he goes to attack, 
you hear some kind of high trilling call. Apologies to people at home. They maybe can't hear that, but it's a high trilling call. We heard it. It's kind of like. (laughs) (laughs) As I said, sing to him. As soon as, as soon as that sound happens, all of a sudden you see Spike, the giant massive alligator, crocodile, tip his head up, listen to it for a moment spin around and dive splashing into the water behind him and swim away towards the sound. He swims through the cavern to whatever is next, and he is out of sight. Do you guys want to follow the alligator? Uh, All right. Gonna, what do you, gonna, where do you choose to go then? Uh, we Move are gonna, your minis where you're going to go. Gonna show, the map on the, that show the map on the camera. Where the croc- 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 uh, croc- croc- gators. <laughs> That's not right uh, well, he's, he was not a crocodile or an alligator because he's not from this world. He's from this That's world. True. He's he's not from our world. He's from this world. So we're gonna swim. He's a smooshy little water. After get in the water and start swimming feet. along. Yeah, after the alligator. All right. So you're now in the water. You go into it as you swim along. You can now see that there are platforms above you are fairly flat. Apparently, there's a trail on either side to the left and to the right. But you're finding it difficult to get back up now that you're in the water. As you move along the channel of the water, let's get this moving along. As you move along the channels of the water and head down them, you come to a point where there is a big waterfall. Are you guys at the waterfall? Areas. Uh, Do you not see a waterfall? I, I see a waterfall Wait, right, there? right. This waterfall? No, this is it right here, I think. Oh. Here, I'll move That's it like right that. There. So there. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're before the so waterfall. There you go. You're right at the top. It looks like it's a good 20 feet down feet down this waterfall if you're so going to go down the it waterfall. It looks like there's a shallower spot here where it comes up out of the water. Do you guys think this one looks more interesting over here, or do you think this might continue over here? Well, this one think, has guys? stairs that go this up. This has stairs. So, and I don't know if I want to wrestle my way across the waterfall. You've decided to go back up on the trail. Is that right? Yeah. We're going to okay. go back up on this uh, trail over here. And uh, <laughs> we're going to proceed down these stairs, I guess, and follow along in this direction. <laughs> okay. As you, as you proceed down those stairs, <laughs> at the bottom of those stairs... Uh, I should have got minis out to put them here, but I'm not going to. We are just going to do theater of the mind. Switch to our 360, and I'm just going to tell you guys what's going to happen. As you go down those stairs to the next thing, on this left lane, you see approaching you a group of people. It looks like there's about eight of them. The one in front is a male. He's quite tall. He's almost a foot taller than all of the rest. He's got uh, quite dark hair, a long black hair to his shoulders, and a beard. The rest uh, are an even mix of males and females. The rest of the men have got, uh, they're all clean shaven with quite short spiky hair. All of them have slightly, very slightly non-human features. You definitely see that they just, they just don't look like any of the other inhabitants that you've encountered so far. They are dressed in almost not very much at all. The women have just got some kind of kelp skirt, very short kelp skirt. The men have got almost like a kelp loincloth is what it looks like, seaweed or kelp or something like that. They are all wearing leather harnesses, Mm. and almost all of them have tridents as they walk to approach you. The man marches up to you and says in Latin, in this very deep voice, you are summoned. Nereo summons you to the wedding. And... uh, Wedding? The rest of them gather around you and they I start know what's hurting. what's happening and I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Prince Eric. <laughs> Anyways. So uh, uh-huh. they gather around you, begin leading you down the path. Hmm. Uh, there are no more obstacles. You gather, obviously, that they're the ones that called away their pet, Crocagator. Mm. And what they what they show you as you get down to the end of this cavern, and you Very see quickly. a large stone platform, and at the top of the stone platform, there is an opening. It's like a door. They all 
climb up to the door. As they go through and they usher you through, you come to the final chamber in this subterranean cavern complex. This massive chamber is bigger than any of the others. And there is no land. The entire thing is one massive subterranean lake. There is what looks like a natural stone jetty that is lances out into the water. And uh, it's got a well-worn path on it. As you walk out this jetty to the water and you get close to the end, you're able to see what is at the end of the jetty just below it. And there, gently floating in the water, is, uh, give me the adventure screen, please, up there, is a massive blue and white whale. This whale is easily 150 feet in length. Unusually, for the first time you've ever seen it, it's a whale that's wearing a harness. Off of the harness that's on this whale, there are uh, quite a few leads that seem to be just running across its back. Most of the party that's been accompanying you stops here and waits in the jetty as the biggest of them, the tallest, Somebody that uh, you would guess is something like a, I don't know, a captain of these people or a leader of these people continues forward, turns around, waves to you to follow him, and walks onto the whale's back, walks up and grabs the two foremost reins on the whale's back. As he does this, the rest of the folk that you are with guide you onto the whale to where they think you should stand. And each tie around each of you, one of the reins around your waist. They don't bind you in any other way, but clearly they are trying to make sure that you are secure on one of the rein harnesses. The last thing that they do before they leave is the females come up. Each of them has a pouch, a little leather pouch on the side of the harness that they are wearing. Whereas most of the males have long knives, the females have these pouches. Each of them reaches into it, brings out a small, clear little bubble, perfect little round bubble, and offers it up to you, each of you, (coughs) and points to your mouth and signs that you should take this little bubble and pop it in your mouth. Which I do. Can you pop the bubbles in your mouth? I recognize it's an air bubble. All right. So the four (laughs) of you uh, and whoever the captain of these people is ride atop this giant whale as the captain grabs the reins, gives them just a very slight flick. This whale starts to move, turn, and swim slowly across the giant lake. As he gets near the far end, he submerges, and you find yourself starting to move down into the water with a stream of bubbles from the whale spinning past you, um, almost like the way you'll see snowflakes in a snowstorm going past when you're traveling. In this case, they're (laughs) bubbles. The whale is picking up speed, and as he picks up speed, he's starting to move down into a very dark, dark passage. There's a little bit of luminescence on the sides of the passage walls, but it's quite dark. The speed is so much that the current is pushing you off of your feet. And you find yourself actually now starting to swing outwards above the whale as the current is lifting you off the whale. And the only thing holding you to the whale is the tether that is tied around your waist. Wow. The captain is also off the whale as well because of the current and he is swimming easily and you realize that his legs have morphed into a giant fishtail and he is easily increasing his own speed to help keep pace with the whale so that his tether does not pull on him as hard as your tether pulls on you so that he can guide the whale. Ahead of you, you see a very, very faint light. It's not a glowing light, it's just lighter, what's obviously lighter water. And within a moment, the whale reaches this lighter point and comes out into what is obviously open ocean. 
and you find yourself in this open teeming tropical ocean where there are schools of fish you're freely swimming along now the bed of the sea is quite far below you there are schools of tuna you go past giant sea turtles that swim along not paying too much attention to you small fish come because they're curious and then they dart away and all the while all the while this whale is swimming forward once in a while making some kind of uh you know whaley noise (laughs) (laughs) as he calls up you continue on like this for you don't know how long it is is it 20 minutes is it an hour there are times where the seabed seems to come up a little bit and when they do you notice that there are a lot of banks of beautiful coral that pass by you at quite a quick pace because this this whale mount that you're riding is moving quite quickly. There are even a couple times you see structures that look like they might once have been other shipwrecks that seem to go by past you, a lot of them teeming with life, crabs, and other things. There is a point at which, as the whale is sounding ahead, you hear a call coming back, and the whale suddenly alters course, and you feel yourselves all pulled to the right a little bit. As the whale pulls to the right, you notice that the captain, the driver of your whale, is looking off very intently to the left. And you think you can see far, far away through the water some giant black shape with big fins moving very, very slowly. And clearly, Mm -hmm. this is a danger that the whale and the captain do not want to go near. Uh, You hear a sound at this point that seems kind of low and ominous echoing through the water that's coming from that direction. And it is clearly something that would eat you. Your journey continues on for another timeless period. You guess it's maybe half an hour, maybe a little more, until all of a sudden the whale starts to descend into deeper, darker water and leave the surface behind. You've been just below the surface about 100, 150 feet this whole time. As you descend deeper, the light starts to diminish above you. After a few moments, though, you start to see just the faintest reflection of glow below you. And this glow grows stronger and stronger the deeper you go and the further you get until you come to a point where there's this deep crevice in the ocean floor and the light is glowing out of it. And as the whale makes his way towards the crevice in the ocean floor, you realize that the light is now coalescing into a lot of little pinprick lights. And all of these little pinprick lights are on this underwater city that basically occupies this gap in the ocean floor. And this is the underwater city, or one of them, of the merfolk. So we're going to leave that right there as far as the story goes. We will pick up right where we are tonight, you entering... The City of the Merfolk. We'll pick that up next week. Uh, 7 o'clock-ish. Between 7 and 7.30 on next Wednesday. Stick around if you want to see the review. Thank you very much.